Thank you. Good morning. It's a great privilege this morning to uh, present the Faith and Work Pioneer recognition to Tom Phillips. It's also a great privilege of mine to count him as a colleague, a mentor, and friend for some uh, 25 years. Tom's celebrating this year his 1970. He's 90 years old, and he's been married for 70 years. Uh, it's an amazing... Uh, I talked to him about how he... He met Gert, his wife. He told me he met her at a Sadie Hawkins dance. <laughs> All the girls took off one shoe. They threw it into the middle of the room. The boys rushed in. They grabbed the shoe. They matched the young lady, and that's who they danced with. And I said to him, weren't you lucky to get Gert? And he said, no, I spotted her, and I looked at her shoes, and I, <laughs> I knew exactly who I was going to pick. Together they have four children, they have uh, 11 grandchildren and 10 great-grandchildren and counting, and with spouses there's 35 of them in the Phillips clan, and they truly are Tom's pride and joy. He was actually born in Istanbul, uh, he of Greek parents, and he moved to the United States at the age of 10, where he attended uh, Boston Latin School and then went on to uh, Virginia Polytechnic where he graduated in 1948 with a master's in electrical engineering. So he's an EE, went on to join Raytheon in 48 and, and Tom is literally a rocket scientist. Uh, he worked on the uh, Sparrow and Hawk missiles and he worked his way through the company eventually becoming the president in 1964, the chairman, in 1975 and in 1991 he retired, 43 years with the same company. A remarkable record of, of consistency. Uh, he uh, came to know Christ later in life uh, in the early 70s at a Billy Graham crusade. He was already the president of Raytheon as he came, came to know Christ and so his first thought was, well, what does this mean? How do I think about being a president of a company and how is that now different? And he focused most of his time thinking about people, about quality, and about the culture. And I think it's true to say that his impact on Raytheon uh, is legendary and has been written about by many people. In fact, I had the privilege many times of going to Raytheon for meetings with him. And uh, even when he had retired, he had an office there at Raytheon. It was just interesting to see him interact with the people. People would just come up to him. People wanted to be with him. The impact he'd had on that organization, not only in terms of how the business performed, but how it was as an organization for people to belong. It was a remarkable testimony to a remarkable man. But Tom was also excited to share his faith with others and to help them in their struggles. Probably the most famous that we know of is uh, Chuck Colson. Chuck Colson in uh, August of 1973, a humid day in Boston, uh, had come to see Tom Phillips because he was taking a role as counsel for uh, Raytheon. And Tom admits later that he had really struggled with what he was going to talk to this man about because obviously he was a lawyer and he'd been caught up in Watergate. And so he was sort of confused about how he should think about this upcoming meeting. So he prayed to God. And as he later said, uh, God said to him very simply, Tom, tell him about me because this man needs a friend. And that's exactly what the meeting was about. Tom talked about his relationship with Jesus Christ. He took him through some passages and read some passages from mere Christianity from uh, C.S. Lewis, particularly a chapter on pride, and then prayed for Chuck Colson. Chuck Colson left that meeting, as, and, and as you would read in his book, Left Behind, sits in the driveway of Tom Phillips' home for an hour or so, just sobbing and giving his life to Jesus Christ. And as we say, the rest is history. Tom is an early pioneer of the work faith movement. For over 40 years now, he has had a first Tuesday breakfast for business leaders in Boston, to which many of us have the privilege of uh, going to and, and, and gaining great insights and strength from. He was an early board member of the Marketplace Network, um, which was founded here in Boston. And he was with uh, Haddon Robinson, the founder of the Theology of Work movement, uh, the Theology of Work project that you will hear more about uh, during the course of uh, this weekend. 
uh, he has he was enormously helpful to me personally uh, in leading these uh, organizations, and particularly at Marketplace Network. I will not forget that Dan Smick, who had founded Marketplace Network, and many of you may remember Dan Smick. When Dan Smick died, we had a board meeting following his death, and we sat around the room uh, as board members, long-faced and sad, wondering what we should do next. And it was Tom Phillips who I remember just stepped into that gap and, and said, this is a mission that God has given us. Dan may be gone, but the mission to take faith into the marketplace is still there. We need to carry on. And when Tom said that, the mood, the mood in the room changed. And he provided such leadership at times like that. Quiet strength, remarkable man. And that really does lead me to talk a little of his character. Um, the first thing that I would say about Tom, and for those of you who know him, humility. You would never know what he has done by meeting Tom Phillips. He never talks about it. Uh, in fact, even trying to get some things out of him for this conversation. I had to wine him and dine him, but I uh, was relatively unsuccessful. He is so, he's so humble, you would not know what he has done. And he deflects, he deflects praise to other people so easily. The second thing I'd say about him is he has a quiet strength as I, I think uh, the example I told you of Marketplace Network, that famous board meeting would indicate. He has a remarkable strength about him, a quietness, even through difficult ups and downs. You run major corporations and you're involved in so many ministries. Over many years, you go through many ups and downs. And Tom has been that quiet strength that we have needed so many times. I would actually re almost say it's a model of meekness. Not a word we use much today, but that's a word that I would use about Tom. He just loves Jesus. That's the last thing I would say about him. He just loves Jesus. And you know, in a world where for many of us, it's hard to look around and find people who are ahead of us, who finish well, Tom Phillips is a man who's finishing well. He's still running those breakfasts. He's still involved. He's still supporting many, many uh, institutions, both financially and with his uh, moral support. He's active and visible and finishing well. It's probably appropriate for a man of 90 years old to think about legacy. And I think he leaves a tremendous legacy and one that challenges all of us, I think, in our own lives. A legacy of a strong family, a legacy of a strong company, a legacy, if you will, of prison fellowship ministries, a legacy of many organizations in the faith work, but not least the Theology of Work Project, and a man, a legacy who leaves a, a, a legacy of impacting people of which uh, I'm proud to stand here and say I was clearly one who was impacted by him and am still impacted by him. You know, it's a cliche to talk about a life well lived. But in this case, I think it's sort of an understatement. Tom Phillips has lived a life very well lived. He's clearly one of the pioneers of the modern work faith movement. And I take great delight in presenting him this morning, the Faith Work Pioneer Recognition Award. And would you join me in thanking and celebrating this remarkable man? Thank you.